emerged that would forever change the landscape of automotive design. This wasn't just a car, it was a statement, a rebellion against convention. The Lamborghini Miura, its slow slung mid-engine layout placed the driver at the very heart of the machine, offering a visceral connection to the road. But the Miura wasn't just about raw power. Under the hood, a roaring 3.9 litre V12 engine pulsated with life, unleashing a symphony of power that propelled the Miura from 0 to 60 in a thrilling 5.5 seconds. It was a true driver's car, demanding respect and rewarding skill with an exhilarating driving experience. Even today, the Lamborghini Miura remains a timeless masterpiece, a testament to the power of innovation and the enduring allure of Italian design. Sometimes the most revolutionary ideas come from those who dare to challenge the status quo and redefine what a car can be. The Miura transcended the realm of automotive engineering, becoming a cultural icon immortalized in films like The Italian Job and revered as a symbol of status and power. Behind the wheel, the Miura delivers an unrivaled driving experience, blending raw power with exhilarating agility and unmatched emotion. Power sent to the rear wheels via five-speed manual transmission, offering precise gear shifts and optimal power delivery. The Miura could accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in approximately six seconds, making it one of the fastest cars of its time. With its potent V12 engine, the Miura boasts a top speed of around 170 to 180 miles per hour, depending on the model and configuration. The Miura utilized a tubular steel chassis, providing a lightweight yet rigid platform for optimal handling and stability. The Miura featured independent suspension with double wishbones and coil springs at all four corners. To bring the Miura's blistering performance to a halt, Lamborghini equipped it with powerful disc brakes on all four wheels. These brakes provided consistent stopping power and fade resistance essential for spirited driving and track use. The Lamborghini Miura's design as the first supercar is significant for several reasons, cementing its place in automotive history. The Miura broke new ground with its mid-engine layout, configuration previously reserved for racing cars. This design choice allowed for optimal weight distribution and enhanced handling characteristics setting a new standard for high-performance road cars. With its powerful V12 engine and lightweight construction, the Miura delivered unprecedented levels of performance for a production car of its time. Its blistering acceleration impressive top speed challenged conventional notions of what a road car could achieve. Marcello Gandini's striking design for the Miura captured the imagination of automotive enthusiasts worldwide. Its sleek aerodynamic silhouette and aggressive stance defined the supercar aesthetic, influencing generations of sports cars to come. The Miura transcended the realm of automotive engineering, becoming a cultural icon, celebrated in films, music and popular culture. Its association with luxury, speed and exclusivity elevated the status of supercars, sparking a fascination that endures to this day. By pioneering the concept of the supercar, the Miura paved the way for subsequent generations of high-performance exotics from Lamborghini and other manufacturers. Its influence can be seen in the design, engineering and marketing strategy of modern supercars, showcasing the enduring impact of this groundbreaking model. In essence, the Lamborghini Miura designation as the first supercar represents a watershed moment in automotive history marking the birth of a new breed of high-performance road cars that continue to captivate enthusiasts and push the boundaries of automotive innovation. The story of Lamborghini's inception is a fascinating tale of ambition, innovation and rivalry. It all began with Ferruccio Lamborghini, an Italian entrepreneur with a passion for mechanical engineering. Ferruccio Lamborghini initially made his fortune by founding a successful tractor manufacturing company, Lamborghini Trattori. This business acumen and engineering expertise allowed him to expand his operations rapidly, establishing Lamborghini as a leading producer of agricultural machinery in Italy. In the early 1960s, Lamborghini, a self-professed car enthusiast, turned his attention to the automotive industry. He had a keen interest in luxury cars, particularly those produced by brands like Ferrari, Maserati and Alfa Romeo. However, Lamborghini felt dissatisfied 
with the performance and reliability of the sports cars available on the market at that time, prompting him to pursue his vision of creating a superior Grand Tourer. In 1963, Lamborghini founded Automobili Lamborghini. Lamborghini assembled a team of talented engineers and designers including Gian Paolo Dallara, Paolo Stanzi and Bob Wallace to bring his visions to life. The company debut model Lamborghini 350 GT was unveiled in 1964 and received critical acclaim for its powerful V12 engine, redefining styling, exceptional performance. However, it was the introduction of the groundbreaking Lamborghini Miura in 1966 that catapulted the brand to international fame. With its mid-engine layout, stunning design by Marcello Gandini of Atoni. revolutionized the automotive industry and established Lamborghini as a formidable competitor in the world of supercars. Despite financial challenges and internal turmoil, Lamborghini continued to innovate and expand its lineup, introducing iconic models like the Espada, Countach and Diablo in the following decades. Today Lamborghini remains a symbol of automotive excellence and performance, producing some of the most sought after and exclusive supercars in the world. The brand's enduring legacy is a testament to Ferruccio Lamborghini's entrepreneurial spirit and relentless pursuit of automotive perfection. Lamborghini produced a total of approximately 764 Miura cars in various configurations. Preserving the legacy of the Lamborghini Miura is a labour of love for enthusiasts and collectors around the world. From painstaking restoration projects to meticulous maintenance routines, the dedication to keeping these automotive masterpieces alive and well is a testament to the enduring allure and historical significance. The Lamborghini Miura isn't just a car. It's a passion that brings together enthusiasts from every corner of the globe. The legacy of the Lamborghini Miura lives on in the modern era, inspiring new generations of supercars and paying homage to its timeless design. From special editions to tribute cars, the influence of the Miura can be seen in every curve and contour of today's Lamborghini lineup, ensuring that its spirit will continue to captivate enthusiasts for years to come. Before the Mira, supercars were primarily focused on brute force and straight line speed, but Lamborghini dared to challenge the status quo, introducing a car that combined power, agility and style in a way that had never been seen before. The Mira wasn't just about getting from point A to point B, it was about the thrill of the drive, the exhilaration of pushing the limits and the sheer joy of automotive artistry. The impact of the Mira reverberated throughout the automotive world, inspiring a new generation of supercars and pushing competitors to raise their game. Its influence can be seen in every corner of the supercar landscape, from its mid-engine layout, which became the standard of high-performance cars, to its iconic design, which continues to inspire designers to this day. But perhaps the most important legacy of the Mira is the way that it captures the imagination of enthusiasts and collectors around the world. For decades, it has been the object of desire for automotive aficionados, a symbol of status, style, and sophistication. Its timeless appeal transcends generations, uniting enthusiasts young and old in their admiration for this automotive masterpiece. The Lamborghini Miura isn't just an important chapter in the history of supercars, it's a defining moment, a turning point that marked the beginning of a new era of automotive excellence. Its legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of enthusiasts everywhere, reminding us of the power of innovation, the beauty of design and the thrill of the open road. Enter a team of passionate engineers, led by the brilliant engineer Gian Paolo Dallara. Working in secret, they poured their hearts and souls into the project, a mid-engine masterpiece that would leave the world speechless. The mirror becomes an instant sensation, so celebrities flock to own it, gracing magazine covers and movie sets. Its futuristic design and raw performance capture the imagination of the car enthusiasts worldwide 
It's not just a car, it's a cultural phenomenon, a symbol of Italian audacity and innovation. The Mira's impact transcends its initial success. It paves the way for a new generation of mid-engine supercars, inspiring countless designers and engineers to push the boundaries of automotive design. But the Mira's legacy goes beyond its technical prowess. It embodies a spirit of rebellion, a challenge to the status quo. Even the most established giants can be challenged by audacious visions and unwavering passion. Today, the Lamborghini Mira remains a timeless icon. Its influence continues to be felt in the automotive world and its captivating design continues to turn heads wherever it goes. It's a testament to the enduring power of innovation, a reminder that dreams when pursued with passion can truly change the world. Owning a Lamborghini Mira is more than just possessing a car, it's owning a piece of automotive history. It's a responsibility to preserve this iconic design and share its legacy with future generations. So this car is kind of famous, Jeff's Mira, and uh, he's out here just about every Sunday. Some people have never seen a Mira in their life. What's it like driving this car? It's like driving an Indy car. It, 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 the sounds are half of the experience. It, ha it handles great, it's all of that, but the sound, if I had to pick out one thing, it's the sound of it. And it is quite powerful. It's, uh, it's only 2,800 pounds. Wow. And it's 370 horsepower. It's a lot for back then. 8,000 RPM. Wow. So high revving. It's a high rever. It's a wonderful machine. I, I, I love the car, um, and I, I would have, I'll probably die owning the car, and, and my wife will sell it, or my kids, or somebody. Right. <laughs> but it won't be me. I <laughs> love it. Because why would I, what am I going to do with a pile of $100 bills? Well, I'd rather have this. Me too. Me too. You know, I love it. It's a 1970 Lamborghini Mura S. All original. For all of the years, they made 700 cars. Wow, and how many years did they produce the car? Well, they produced um, 1967 to 1972. Love it. So there's, when you look at the car quickly, they all kind of look the same, but then when you start to nitpick them, oh, there's a whole bunch of different things. The Lamborghini Mira, a legend born from rebellion, a testament to audacious design and a symbol of automotive excellence that continues to inspire generations. The Lamborghini Mira wasn't solely the brainchild of one individual, but rather a collaborative effort between several talented designers and engineers. Marcello Gandini, this young rising star of the Batoni Design House is credited with the Mira's revolutionary and breathtaking design. He took inspiration from jet fighters and sharks, creating the car's low slung, silhouetted, sharp angles and his audacious vision and ability to translate complex engineering into the visually stunning form were critical to the Mira's success. Gian Paolo Dallara, as the chief engineer of Lamborghini at the time, Dallara played a pivotal role in the Mira's technical development. He and his team tackled the challenge of incorporating a mid-mounted V12 engine into a production car, ensuring optimal weight distribution, handling, and performance. Dallara's expertise were instrumental in bringing the Mira's design to life. Paolo Stanzini and Bob Wallace these two Lamborghini engineers also played significant roles in the Mira's development. Stanzini, along with Dallara, contributed significantly to the car's chassis and suspension design, ensuring its agility and responsiveness. Wallace, a test driver and racing enthusiast, provided valuable feedback throughout the development process pushing the boundaries of performance and handling. A dedicated team of engineers, designers, and craftsmen at Lamborghini and Batoni contributed their expertise and passion to make this iconic car a reality. The rivalry between Ferruccio Lamborghini and Enzo Ferrari is one of the most captivating and well-known stories of the automotive world. It's a tale of ambition, competition and clashing personalities that fueled the creation of iconic supercars. Before becoming a competitor, Ferruccio was a successful tractor manufacturer 
and a passionate car enthusiast. He owned several Ferraris, but he was frequently dissatisfied with their performance and reliability, particularly the clutch issues he experienced with his Ferrari 250 GT. The dismissive encounter being disregarded by Enzo Ferrari himself, Ferruccio decided to take matters into his own hands. He believed he could build a better sports car, one that addresses the shortcomings he had encountered. Driven by a desire to prove himself and create a superior car, Ferruccio established Automobili Lamborghini in 1963. He assembled a team of talented engineers, many former Ferrari employees, and set out to challenge the dominance of Ferrari. The Lamborghini 350 GT unveiled in 1964 marked the brand's official entry into the supercar arena. The rivalry wasn't just about technical prowess, it also became a battle of egos. Ferruccio, perceived as an outsider challenging the established Ferrari, often made public statements critical of Ferrari's cars. Enzo, on the other hand, dismissed Lamborghini as a mere tractor manufacturer who didn't understand the intricacies of building high-performance automobiles. The rivalry wasn't solely driven by personal animosity. It also reflected the broader competition within the Italian automotive industry, where companies consistently strive to push the boundaries of design, performance, technological innovation. The Lamborghini-Ferrari rivalry ultimately benefited the car enthusiasts worldwide. It spurred both companies to constantly innovate and develop even more powerful, stylish and technologically advanced supercars. This competition pushed the boundaries of automotive design and engineering, leading to the creation of some of the most iconic and desirable cars in history. While the intensity of the rivalry may have softened over time, it continues to be a source of fascination for car enthusiasts. It serves as a reminder of the power of passion, competition, and the relentless pursuit of excellence in the automotive world. The specific details of the initial encounter between Ferruccio and Enzo regarding the clutch issue vary depending on the source. While the rivalry was often portrayed as a personal feud, it's important to acknowledge the broader economic and competitive factors at play. Both Lamborghini and Ferrari continue to be iconic brands, each with its own loyal following and distinct contribution to the automotive landscape. The Lamborghini Miura wasn't just a car, it was a gamble, a rebellion, and a testament to audacious innovation. Unlike the official Lamborghini projects, the Miro was born from a secret initiative spearheaded by a small team of passionate engineers led by Gian Paolo Dallara. They worked tirelessly in their spare time, utilizing leftover materials and their own ingenuity. Ferruccio Lamborghini himself was initially unaware of the project. He wasn't particularly keen on mid-engine designs, preferring the traditional front-engine layout. The project relied heavily on resourcefulness and improvisation. The team used readily available components from other Lamborghini models and even sourced parts from scrapyards to keep costs down. Financial constraints were significant. Lamborghini, still a young company, couldn't allocate substantial uh, resources to an unapproved project. The team relied on their passion determination to help create solutions and keep the project moving forward. Tony recognized the Mira's potential, providing crucial support and financial backing to help bring the prototype to fruition. But Tony saw Mira as an opportunity to showcase their design prowess and challenge Ferrari's dominance in the automotive world. Despite the initial secrecy, the Mira's stunning design and innovative features captivated the audience at its unveiling at the 1966 Geneva Auto Show. The car's instant success was not only validated by the team's efforts, but also securing crucial funding for further development and production. The Mirror's story is an inspiring example of passion, perseverance, and resourcefulness. It serves as a reminder that even with limited resources, audacious dreams can be turned into reality. The success of the Mirror not only brought the financial stability to Lamborghini, but also established the company as a serious competitor in the supercar market. The story of the Mira's unconventional creation continues to inspire car enthusiasts and entrepreneurs worldwide, demonstrating the power of innovation and defying the odds.
The statement that the Lamini Mira's sideways mounted engine was directly inspired by the Mini is not entirely accurate. While the Mini's transverse engine layout might have been a reference point for some engineers at Lamborghini, there were several other factors that played a more significant role in the Mira's design choices. Primary motivation for the Mira's mid-engine layout was to achieve optimal weight distribution for a superior handling and performance. Placing the engine behind the driver's seat allowed a near perfect 50-50 weight distribution, which was crucial for a car aiming to compete with established supercars like Ferraris. The Lamborghini Mirror's low-slung, sleek design posed a challenge in accommodating a traditional front-mounted V12 engine. Mounting the engine sideways in a mid-engine configuration allowed for a lower profile and a more balanced weight distribution within the car's compact dimensions. While not the sole inspiration, the transverse engine layout used in some car models included the Mini might have been considered as a potential solution during the Mira's development. However, it's important to remember that the Mini's engine was a much smaller unit compared to the powerful V12 Lamborghini engines we're working with. It's crucial to acknowledge that the Lamborghini engineers, led by Gio Paolo Dallara, were highly skilled and innovative in their own right. They weren't simply copying existing designs, they were actively seeking solutions to achieve optimal performance and handling characteristics within the constraints of a Mira's design goals. Following the Mira's groundbreaking success, Gandini went on to design several other iconic Lamborghini models, including 1974 Lamborghini Countach, arguably Gandini's most famous creation after the Mira. The Countach took the wedge-shaped design philosophy to an even more extreme level, creating a car that became synonymous with automotive excess and poster child status. Marcello Gandini's legacy extends far beyond the Lamborghini Mira. He is considered one of the most influential automotive designers of the 20th century, leaving an indelible mark on the industry with his bold, innovative and often futuristic designs. The Lamborghini Mira's design was indirectly influenced by the Ford GT40, but it was in a direct copy or heavily inspired by its aesthetics. The mid-engine layer of the Mira was indeed inspired by the success of the Ford GT40 in the 1960s. This layer offered several advantages including improved weight distribution, placing the engines behind the driver's seat allowed for a near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Lower center of gravity, this contributed to better stability and agility especially important for a high-performance car like the Mira. While the GT40's layout served as a reference point, the Mira's design itself was entirely unique. Marcello Gandini, the designer of the Mira, took the concept of a mid-engine layout and translated it into his own bold and futuristic vision. The overall aesthetic of the two cars are vastly different. The Mira's low-slung, wedge-shaped design, the engine configuration also differed. Both were mid-engined, the GT40 used longitudinal mounted V8 engine, while the Mira opted for a transversely mounted V12. This difference significantly impacted the packaging and overall design of the cars. The Lamborghini Mira's mid-engine layout was undoubtedly influenced by the success of the Ford GT40 in demonstrating the potential of this configuration for high performance cars. However, the Mira's design itself was a distinct and innovative creation that pushed the boundaries of automotive design and established its own unique identity in the automotive world. The Lamborghini Mira, despite its iconic status, was unfortunately prone to catching fire due to a combination of factors related to its design and early production limitations. One of the reasons is the location of the fuel system components. The Mira's mid-engine layout placed the carburetor and fuel lines very close to the hot engine components. This proximity increased the risk of fuel leaks ignition due to heat exposure. In some cases, improper insulation around these fuel lines further exacerbated the problem, allowing heat to transfer more easily, raising the risk of ignition. Early Mira models used aging electrical components and improper wiring insulation. 
This could lead to electrical faults that could potentially spark and ignite flammable materials like fuel or oil. Additionally, poor grounding of electrical components could create stray currents that could also pose a fire hazard. The mirror's low slung design and limited space made it difficult to incorporate adequate ventilation for the engine compartment. Early mirror models lacked any built-in fire suppression systems. This meant that if a fire did break out, it could quickly spread and engulf the car without any immediate means of extinguishing it. It's important to note that not all mirrors were guaranteed to catch fire. These factors contributed to an increased risk and proper maintenance and addressing known issues could mitigate the problem. However, the inherent design limitations and lack of safety features in early models undeniably made the mirror more susceptible to fires compared to modern cars with stricter safety regulations and advanced fire suppression systems. as they produce later iterations of the mirror, implementing improvements in insulation, ventilation, and electrical systems. While the fire risk undoubtedly tarnished the mirror's reputation to some extent, it's crucial to remember its historical significance and, and groundbreaking design. The car's legacy extends beyond the occasional safety concern, and it continues to be admired for its innovation, performance, and timeless aesthetic. While undeniably a legendary and beautiful car, it was also known for being challenging to drive, especially compared to modern standards. Here's a breakdown of some of the factors that contributed to its demanding nature. While the mid-engine layout offered benefits in terms of handling and performance, it also presented challenges for drivers. The rearward weight bias could make the car feel more prone to oversteer and require more precise steering inputs, especially at high speeds or on slippery surfaces. Limited rear visibility due to engine placement further added to the challenging of maneuvering the car in tight spaces or reversing. Unassisted steering and brakes. Unlike modern cars equipped with power steering and brakes, the mirror relied on unassisted systems. This requires more physical effort from the driver to turn the wheel and brake effectively, especially at low speeds or during emergency maneuvers. The lack of power steering also made the car less forgiving of minor steering corrections, demanding more precise and controlled inputs. Early mirror models lacked the sophisticated traction control and stability systems commonly found in the modern cars. This meant that drivers had to rely solely on their skills, experience, or maintain control of the car in challenging situations. The car's high power output combined with the lack of electronic aids could make it more susceptible to loss of control for inexperienced drivers or in adverse weather conditions. The mirror's low slung design resulted in limited ground clearance. This could make it susceptible to scraping the undercarriage or even uneven surfaces or speed bumps requiring careful maneuvering and awareness of road conditions. The car's stiff suspension while contributing to its sharp handling could also make the ride uncomfortable and jarring on rough roads, especially for passengers. Compared to modern cars with standardized layouts, the mirror's interior controls could be unfamiliar and quirky for some drivers. The placement of the shifter, pedals, and other controls might require some adaptation and getting used to. It's important to remember that the driving experience of the mirror was, for many, part of its appeal. The car demanded skill, focus, and a certain level of bravery from the driver, offering a more raw and connected experience compared to modern technology laden vehicles. While the mirror might not be considered the easiest car to drive by today's standards, its challenging nature undoubtedly contributed to its mystique and allure, solidifying its place as a legend in the automotive world. Lamborghini introduced the Mirror S and Mirror SV, addressing various aspects of the car and further solidifying its status as an automotive icon. Here's a breakdown of the key components introduced in the Mirror S and SV. Enhanced performance, engine upgrades. Both the Mirror S and the SV received upgraded versions of the original 3.9 litre V12 engine. The S offered a slight increase in power, while the SV saw a significant boost, reaching 370 horsepower in its final iteration. The carburetors were revised for better fuel delivery and performance. 
contributing to smoother power delivery and increased responsiveness. The cooling system was upgraded to better manage engine heat, addressing concerns about overheating, particularly in the early Mira models. So suspension was revised in both the S and the SV models, offering improved balance and handling characteristics. Stiffer springs and revised shock absorbers provided better control and sharper response during cornering. Wider tyres were introduced, offering increased grip and improved stability, especially at high speeds. Recognising the fire risk associated with the early Mira, Lamborghini implemented improvements in the S and the SV models. These included better insulation around fuel lines, upgraded electrical components, and the introduction of a fire extinguisher as standard equipment. Larger and more powerful brakes were incorporated in the S and the SV to enhance stopping power and improve overall safety. While retaining the iconic silhouette, the S and the SV models incorporated minor aesthetic changes such as revised air intakes and tailgates, adding a touch of refinement to the original design. The interiors of the S and SV received some upgrades, including improved materials and revised instrument layouts for better ergonomics and comfort. The Mira S and SV represented significant advancements over the original model. These improvements addressed performance limitations, safety concerns, and even offered some aesthetic refinements, solidifying the Mira's position as a top contender in the supercar market. The Mira S was produced from 1967 to 1968, serving as a bridge between the original Mira and the more powerful SV. The Mira SV, introduced in 1969, was the ultimate iteration of the Mira, offering the most powerful engine and the most refined driving experience. While the improvements addressed some of the initial shortcomings, the Mira S and SV still retained some of the challenging driving characteristics inherent to the mid-engine layout and unassisted systems. The legacy of the Mira S and SV lies in their contribution to the evolution of this iconic car. These improved models not only cemented the Mira's place in automotive history, but also paved the way for future Lamborghini models to continue pushing the boundaries of design, performance and innovation. While there's no single definitive answer, the Lamborghini Mira is widely considered the first supercar for several key reasons that revolutionized the high performance automotive landscape. The Mira's most significant contribution was its mid-engine layout. This innovative placement of the engine behind the driver's seat offered several advantages. Improved weight distribution, placing the engine closer to the center of the car resulted in near perfect 50-50 weight distribution, leading to superior handling and agility. Lower center of gravity, this further enhanced stability and responsiveness, particularly during cornering. The mid-engine layout allowed for a sleeker and more aerodynamic profile compared to traditional front engine designs innovative design. It boasted exceptional performance for its time. The 3.9 litre V12 engine delivered impressive power and acceleration, reaching a top speed of over 170 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest production cars of its era. The Mira's low-slung wedge-shaped design by Marcello Gandini was unlike anything seen before. Its bold and futuristic aesthetics broke away from conventional car designs and established a new visual language for high-performance automobiles. The Mira wasn't just a power and innovative car. It was a status symbol. Its limited production, coupled with its high price tag, made it an exclusive and desirable object for wealthy enthusiasts and celebrities. The Mira's influence extended far beyond its production years. It inspired a generation of car designers and manufacturers to explore the potential of mid-engine layout and prioritize both performance and aesthetics in supercar design. It's important to acknowledge that there were other high-performance cars before the Mira. However, the combination of its groundbreaking mid-engine layout, exceptional performance, stunning design, and emphasis on exclusivity solidified the Mira's position as a game changer and the pioneering model for what we now recognize as the modern supercar.
The term supercar wasn't officially used until the late 1960s, but the Mira's characteristics and impact undeniably paved the way for this category of high performance exclusive automobiles. While the Mira wasn't without its shortcomings, such a limited practicality and challenging driving characteristics, its groundbreaking design and performance innovation continue to be celebrated and admired by car enthusiasts worldwide.